Tips for new ICU nurses, part one. Don't take assertive people personally. ICU is full of assertive people because when things go down, you need, go get this, go do that, do this. There's no time for fluff or explanation or pleases. It's very almost military kind of when a code happens or when we're getting up to a code. So you may see physicians and providers say, go do this, or your preceptor or someone else, go do this, go get that. That's normal. Do not take it personally. I have seen people take it personally. Um, if you grew up in an environment where you commuted only in subtext, where people never actually said what they wanted, um, you may view direct communication as confrontational. Please don't do that. That is nothing personal. It's genuinely just trying to get a task done as fast as humanly possible. Number two, don't be messing with somebody else's pumps, y'all. You may notice in the ICU that some patients have one pump, some patients have two pumps or zero pumps, and some patients have 15 pumps, okay? The nurse who's taking care of that patient has it all worked out in their mind about what is what, what they're titrating, what needs to stay where, and if an alarm, a, a, if an IV pump starts beeping and you go in there and you're trying to be helpful and you want to, you know, titrate the levofed for them or add more fluid or whatever, please don't do that, especially if you're new. What I want you to do if you're new is to silence it, find the nurse who it belongs to and say, hey, your levofed, um, your patient's pressure is this, the levofed's at that, would you like me to titrate it for you? They may say, oh wait, no, let me go do that and let them deal with it without jumping the gun there, okay? When you establish rapport with people and learn how people work, then you can adjust that, but at the beginning, Press silence and then ask what they'd like you to do. Now, unless it's life or death, but if it's life or death, that nurse should be in the room. Number three, when things start going downhill and you're with your preceptor, don't ask a ton of questions, okay? It's very difficult for a preceptor to stabilize a patient and think critically and answer questions simultaneously. I'm not saying you can't ask any questions. Use some discernment here. But don't be asking all the, why are you choosing this? And why are you doing this? And why would you do this instead of this? Wait till that patient is stable and situated. That that preceptor is doing a lot in their brain that you can't see. And if you're asking all these questions, they're probably getting frustrated with you. And they're, hold on, wait, I'll tell you, you know, give them a second, all right? Um, and then come back. Again, not personal or anything, but let's get the patient stabilized, then we can learn from it. All right, we're going to have a part two.